Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Mike Shields, and I'm here with Dr. Lindsay Winland. She's the Group Vice President of Client Data Science at 605. Hey, Lindsay, thanks for being here. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. A TV, generally speaking, attribution is considered to be difficult. Like, you don't buy stuff, you don't click on things in TV ads. You don't buy stuff on your television you don't always have a, you don't always logged in or, or that, although that's changing so like what do, what do you know about uh, the attribution business that make, that makes you can make it work for television and, and where do you where how do you get to a place where your product can help track outcomes yeah of course so our product uh, um, our attribution product is called 605 impact and there are a couple of key features in there that I want to hit on so the first part is that we sit on a large, massive amount of data across, you know, set-top box, ACR, and digital data that provides content and ad viewing at the second level for linear, and then digital is based on, you know, impression-based. Now, what we do with that is we have 100% um, matching rights to our data, so we can connect it to any first or third-party outcome data set, which is key for attribution, right? So, for example, if we're looking at, say, a... Um, Burger King campaign that's airing, you know, across platforms, we can tie the second that the household saw the Burger King campaign to did they then go to Burger King and make a purchase? Now, as far as linear, you're right, right? People advertise ads and you can't control the sampling. In an ideal world for like, say, um, an experimental design, you want to randomly sample people, determine the effectiveness of the campaign, and you have pure control on who was your treatment group and your control group. Now, with a linear campaign, you have less control because your ads are, you know, airing nationally. And what we want to do is try to replicate that experimental design. So we take each exposed household that sees an ad and we match it to a, a similar unexposed household on a, hundreds of attributes. And this is where we try to mimic this idea of experimental design and get at the causality of a campaign. So getting that incremental lift. Let me make sure I understand that last part, because um, sure. it sounds like from the beginning, you're saying uh, hypothetically, you have a bunch of data that shows that this Burger King ad ran in my house or my screen, and you try and match that up with data that's, that shows I went to a Burger King or my family went to Burger King somehow. But it sounds like you're using some projections there or, tr or some probability calculation to make because you don't always know when people go into a Burger King. Did I understand that right? True. So our data is deterministic, meaning we're not making predictions on who likely went. We okay. do use a deterministic matching model. So the data is basically connect to an ID spine, right? So we work with first and third party vendors, place IQs, affinities, Catalinas, anybody who provides the data. We link that to our viewership data, and then we can see the exact timestamp a household saw that brand impression, and then they went to Burger King. And that they data is from Burger like King. what loyalty cards, things, or phones, or what, what, what shows sure. you? Sure. Some of them are tracked. So for example, if you look at geolocation data that's tracked by your mobile phones, perhaps you have some free apps. They're free because, you know, they're tracking where you've been. Sure. Also, there's loyalty cards when you go to some grocery stores, as well as some credit cards. So there's a myriad of ways that you can collect the data, all in a privacy compliant manner. We do not house any, you know, personally identifiable information. Right. Um, we work with, you know, vendors who provide us this data and match it. 